Hello. Jason, just a, a quick one to start, and then I'll ask the actual question. Twice in the last four years, we've done these with the coach, and the coach was gone two days later. Can you state for the record, is Phil going to be your coach next year? Yes, 100%. Phil Housley will be our coach next year. I have certainly enjoyed working with Phil um, over the past year here. Uh, I think the way uh, I want to put the team together, the way he wants to play, is a good mix. And... Uh, He'll certainly be here for as our coach next year. And the, the question I wanted to have, certainly from locker cleanout day, obviously the comments of Ryan O'Reilly generated a lot of chatter. Um, how concerned are you that a core player feels like he lost his love for the game and seems to indicate that losing became accepted? And what do you do with him going forward to try to work him through clearly the issues that he seems to have? Well, first off, I think he gave you an honest opinion. And um, in today's sports world, that's a little bit unique. But um, you look at Ryan, he was a big part of our team. He played hard uh, throughout the entire season. But it's also an emotional game. And when you don't win, when you don't get the results you want, it can be really draining on a player. And what he said is probably indicative of a lot of our players within our organization. And that's what we have to work through right now. Right now, we have a losing culture. We haven't won here. And it's up to Phil and I to work with our players, to work through that, to make sure we change our culture. Jason, to kind of follow up on that, um, when you got here and as the season progressed, is there any way you might have underestimated how much of a losing culture had seeped into this franchise um, at any point of the season? I don't know if I would say I'd underestimate it, but I did not I did notice it right off the bat in, in, in tight games. I felt um, there were certainly times, and you can go back to our first uh, long road trip out to Western, or excuse me, uh, Western United States, out to California. I felt we had some good efforts in San Jose, some good efforts in L.A., yet even in the Vegas game, yet we found ways to lose. And to me, in those tight situations, in those tight games, we did not have a lot of confidence. And someone can always say, well, once you win a few of those games, you build confidence as a group. But it's hard finding a way to win those games. And that's what we have to improve on as an organization. We have to improve our habits. We do not, they don't come natural for us right now. And what I mean by that is practice days, intensity in practice, taking care of ourselves, communication with our coaches and our players. We have to do more of that than that. So when we get into those situations, those tight games, we have more confidence to find a way to win. Jason, many times Phil talks about we didn't execute the game plan. We gave them the game plan. They didn't do it. We watched it. We all saw it. Is it fair to say that you have some players on this team that are pretty much uncoachable? I wouldn't say uncoachable. I, I think that we have some players with some strong opinions. And part of the reason those strong opinions that got them to the National Hockey League because they were motivated, they were they were dedicated. Sometimes when people would say, "Hey, you're not a National Hockey League player. There's no way you're going to make it," they overcame the odds and came to the National Hockey League. Um, but it is a situation where, as an organization, we have to improve our communication. We have to make sure our coaches and our players are on the on the same page. And um, you can just see it in any successful organization. You know, you see some of the teams that have turned it around this year. You talk about the relationship with star players, your relationship with the core players and the coaches all being on the same page. Um, and the, the good thing with our team is whenever we did it, we did have success. And it's, look, we finished 31st. We deserve to finish 31st. But against some of the top teams, especially top teams in the East, we had some strong performances. When we were on the same page, when we played the system, when we were prepared, we had good results. We just were far too inconsistent in that throughout the year. So Jason, following up on that, your previous two comments, you talk about needing to change habits, uh, a losing culture, uh, coaches and players not being on the, on the same page. Those aren't minor issues. Uh, how quickly 
or how deep rooted are these problems and how quickly do you think you can get it turned around? Look, it's the beautiful, the beautiful thing with the National Hockey League right now. And you know all the examples. There's a lot of parity in the league. And it's not like some other sports where it takes years to turn it around. Um, you always have a chance going into the year. But if we think that, you know what, we just maybe work a little, a little bit harder in the summer or have a couple you know, conversations, uh, all the results will come next year, then we're kidding ourselves. But I do believe in our, some of our core players and our star players. And what excites me is that they're still very young and there's a situation of developing them as players it's also a situation where we're developing them as leaders. And I did talk to you earlier about mentioning the losing culture. It has to start somewhere. And that's why I've always been a big proponent of building things in Rochester. And when we sent down, I think, eight players at the end of the season to go down there, they're excited about going down there and being part of that atmosphere and gaining some playoff experience. So you bring them into the mix next year. You hopefully have a healthier team. And that's one of the things that we challenged our players over the last couple of days here. You know, one of the things that they can control is how they work out in the summer, how they train in the summer, because we can't have the man games lost that we had this year. That's something that we can control, and we need to do that through the summer. So it is a situation where I believe we can have better results next year by changing certain things. Phil was a rookie coach, of course. What, what tells you that he has his finger on the pulse of this? What, what did you like about the job he did this year? And will his, will his entire staff return? Look, it's a situation with his staff. We, um, we will have meetings with him next couple days and then early into next week also. Um, but just like our entire organization, we'll be reevaluating re everything. Um, when you finish where we do, you have to evaluate everything. Um, we'll talk to them about a situation of what opportunities present themselves for the individual coaches, um, but also what's best for our group here to give it the most success. Um, in regards to Phil, um, I feel he improved his communication with the players. I like how he wants to play. Um, I like the system that he wants to play. Um, you know, you just look at a development of a, a player like Sam Reinhardt who struggled at the start of the year but came on in the second half of the year. You look at how some of our players, such as Casey Nelson and Brendan Gooley, came up from uh, Rochester and how they performed here. I like what he's done from a development standpoint. I'm going to ask about four individual players. You just mentioned two of them, uh, just regarding their contract status. Uh, what's your plans for Robin Leonard, who will be a restricted free agent? Sam, also. Uh, Casey Nelson will be a UFA. And Matt Molson, who has a one year. Okay. Um, Rob in a situation where he had a second opinion on a, a lower body injury. Thankfully, he doesn't need surgery. Um, so it'll be a situation where um, he'll be healthy for next year, which is a great thing. Um, I think Robin had a year where he was certainly disappointed in the final results. Um, you look at our goaltending overall. It was something that, like our team, needed to be better. Um, in certain situations, we had some great goaltending efforts. So you look at our first win in Anaheim by Chad Johnson. When we played some of our best hockey out in Western Canada, I thought our goaltending was exceptional there, but it needs to be better. Uh, we are very excited about Linus Allmark being one of our two goalies next year, and we'll make a decision in the next couple months what would be the other goalie in that situation. Sam Reinhardt, we were very happy with his uh, second half. I think that's a, he's a, he illustrates communicating with our coaching staff and you know developing as a young player, and that's what gets it. Like I said earlier, what gets us excited is we have so many young players still on our. You know they've been around here now a little bit, whether it's Jack, Sam, uh, Ristolainen. But they're still very young, and there's lots of opportunity for development there. Um, I have not spoken to his agent yet about a contract. We felt where we were in the standings. Um, it wasn't a situation where we wanted to talk contracts in the year. But uh, Craig Oster certainly has quite a few players on our team, and I'll be reaching out to him in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, Matt Molson has been uh, down in Ontario in the American Hockey League. Uh, their team looks like it's going to be going to the playoffs. Um, there will be a situation where we follow up with Matt um, in the springtime. Casey Nelson, uh, to me, he's a, you know, an example of what we have to do here in this organization. Is from develop from within, and uh, maybe he didn't have the training camp he expected, um, but I thought he did a very good job uh, developing his game in Rochester, coming on there, and then when he came up, maybe played too high up in the lineup here, uh, but it was a great experience for both Brendan and Casey. Um, our communication with him has been. Very positive. He's excited about going down to Rochester for the playoff and help them on a playoff run. Um, 
I can never say say the players were going to be 100% coming back until we get a contract done. But our uh, communication, um, just with talking about Casey and his um, development in our organization, has been very positive. Jason, broad picture, you said that there are a lot of things that need to be changed. We know that Phil Housley is not going to be one of those. But is there anything that you can say, any area in particular, that you want to have better next year, whether it's defense, depth, scoring from all four lines, whatever it might be? Anything in particular that you really want to change this upcoming summer? When you finish 31st, you pretty much need to improve in every category. Let's be honest. And we're going to get a good player wherever we pick in the draft, whether it's one through four. Um, that's certainly going to help our situation. Um, but um, I would say the couple things that I really want to improve on is our team speed up front. We have to add more skill, and I felt that came with Casey Middlestad. And we just have to get faster on the wings. And I thought uh, some of our young players like Nick Baptiste or Justin Bailey came up, um, certainly contributed to that. And what excites us uh, is that we're starting to build, which I think is key for us moving forward, some internal competition. You know, uh, there's going to be spots for players from Rochester up in our organization here next year. I can't sit here and tell you which one of the, you know, the young wingers I've just mentioned, or an Alex Nylander, or C.J. Smith, or, um, you know, Malone, or the player we just signed in Ogilvy. They're all going to get opportunities. Um, but that's what we have to improve on, because right now, when we have an injury or two, every team has injuries. But we don't have the depth right now to overcome those injuries. Jason, it's well documented there are on many nights there are more empty blue seats than filled seats. Tickets were going on secondary markets for six bucks a, head, a shot. What are you going to do to reinvigorate the season ticket base, the regular season ticket base, and the sponsors for that matter? Um, there are you know seven years without the playoffs, you know, too many last place finishes. What do you feel you can do to turn that around? Well, all I can say is that we feel our pain. We understand where we're at right now. We know. And I think you saw in the player exit meetings there last couple of days, um, there's a disappointment from their standpoint. They understand how passionate the fans here are in Buffalo and how much we all want playoff hockey. But I also think what's happened at times in the past year has been there's been a lot of talk. And you know, I didn't when I talked to the players over the last little bit here, I don't want to hear about how disappointed they are. I want to hear about what's going to change. What is the action plan moving forward here? So from my standpoint, um, yeah, there's some things that I'm excited about in this organization. The development of Casey Middlestead. What's going on in Rochester? Um, some of our young talent. But I'm also aware we have to earn their respect back. It can't just be about words. We have to have better results. Regarding Rasmus Asplund and Victor Olofsson, a couple of Swedes that are still to be determined, are they coming to North America next season, or, or, is, or is their status going to be? Uh, our conversations with them have been very positive. Obviously, both of them are still playing right now with the uh, Swedish national team. Uh, I think they have some exhibition games this, this weekend. Uh, we're actually hopeful that both of them could be possible players at the World Championship team. Um, neither of them would be able to come over to Rochester until uh, that situation has uh, to the end of the world championships there. Um, but both of them are, we we feel comfortable that they'll probably be over here in uh, North America next year. You mentioned the exit interviews and wanting to hear a few things. Did you hear anything from the players that you liked and with anything that excited you and along the lines of the exit interviews, did anyone ask for a trade? No one asked for a trade. Um, going through exit interviews on April 9th and 10th, Flat out sucked. Um, was there anything drastically different or unexpected? No. And I, I think that's, we've tried to have communication with our players throughout the season. And um, there's a level of, like I told you before, there's a level of disappointment from the players. And what we really f tried to focus on with them is, okay, there's disappointment. What are we going to do here? Moving forward? And I brought it to you earlier about uh, just training methods. And, you know, that's something that they, personally can control. Um, and I think it's, as an organization, we talk about relationships, about communication, something that we have to improve on. Um, I think that's something throughout the summer that hopefully, you know, the players can foster strong relationships with each other and 
there'll be touch points with us um, that will hopefully strengthen, you know, player coaching relationship situations and simple things such as development camps. They're kind of just, you know, casual things. They're important for us. It's important for a Casey Middle stat to really get acclimated with what we want to do here. Um, if a you know a player like Olofsson or Asman coming over from Sweden at the camps, it's important that they get things set up so they're better prepared for the start of the season. Jason, uh, what did you see in Jack Eichel's development as both a player and as in a leadership capacity? And do you feel he is capable um, of being the team leader next year as, and, and, and worthy of being a captain? I think you saw in his exit, in our, our exit meeting there, um, he's matured a lot as a young man. And, uh, you know, even with this game, I thought when our team was playing some of its best hockey, uh, Jack was a big part of it. And it's not just offensively. It's, you saw when our team had success, we did a lot better away from the puck, tracking with the puck. Um, you saw in the second half our power play improving. That was a big part of Jack and stuff too. Um, he's taking the right steps and just like, I mentioned Sam, you know, Jack is still a young man and there's lots of room for development there. Um, I have a feel, I feel comfortable talking with him. I feel I have a good relationship with him. Um, yeah, we, we view him as a big leader in our organization moving forward here. Um, we'll all certainly sit down with Phil in the off season and talk about what's the best thing for us from a captain perspective. Um, but as excited as we are as of Jack moving forward as a leader, it's imperative that we have more players in that locker room step up from that standpoint. This game cannot have one player lead the entire team. It's imperative that we have stronger voices in there because we have some players who have some NHL experience in playoffs that need to feel more comfortable to step up in those roles. We have younger players who have been part of this organization now for three, four, or five years who can't sit in the background anymore. Have to be a part of it. We have to have a stronger leadership group. Jason, there's been a lot of coaches and GMs run through here in the last five or six years. Uh, the coach and GM were both replaced last year. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you characterize over the last year and at the end of the season, your relationship with Terry, how much feedback you get from him, and what is his level of anger about the way this season transpired and ended? His level of anger is fairly high. Well, we'll just, we'll just, it is high. And... Uh, I don't blame him. I've been here for one year, and I was pretty pissed off and upset throughout the year. And I guess I could be articulate, but I will just say it sucks that I, we won't be in watching in live playoff hockey right now. They'll be just all on TV. Um, because we do have all the resources here to have success. You know, whether you look at uh, practice facility across the street, uh, performance. Uh, sports program, uh, coaches, skills coaches, it's all here for success. Yet, it hasn't transpired here. Um, I certainly feel I have a strong relationship with Terry. I've certainly communicated on a daily occurrence. Um, I've tried to keep him abreast of everything and just making sure that uh, he understands everything. He's been very supportive, both Phil and I, um, about different difficult decisions we've had to make. Um, but yeah, very similar to a lot of people in our organization. He's disappointed. Obviously, we understand that you're not going to be happy with a non-playoff season, especially given what you've come from in the last 10 years. How humbling has this experience been for you this year? This is not something you have become used to in any way, shape, or form. Yep. Uh, it certainly seems very early to be doing exit meetings, as I talked to you about before. And it's... Uh, it's not fun. It's certainly not fun. Uh, that being said, it, I think this year has reinforced to me my belief in what a good organization looks like and what it should, how it should function. And you saw it on the ice when our team implemented things and followed the system. We had success, and to me. It's just like some of our young players that came up in the season. You know, everyone talks about NHL experience, how valuable NHL experience is. And it goes both ways. Like, it was great that Casey Middlestad got his first National Hockey League goal. That's a positive experience. 
but off the top of my head, I think he lost five out of six games since he was up here. There's things with NHL experience of what he has to change and what he has to be make sure that he doesn't fall into the trap of. And that's what I sort of viewed from this past season. Is there it strengthened my belief in what I saw in Pittsburgh and what Phil saw in Nashville, what we have to bring to our group here. Hey Jason, how much roster change do you anticipate having this off season? And how big is the group of guys currently here that you would consider definitively will be a part of this organization at the beginning of next year? Well, look, there certainly has to be change, and there will be change. Um, you talked about some that you saw some of the players uh, that came up from Rochester in the year. A lot of them will be up to here next year, or at least battling for positions from that standpoint. Um, when you finish where we are, we have to look at it, everything, and that means looking at even changing up our core players. Um, from a free agent standpoint, We'll be involved with free agency, but I'm a believer that, that you just can't build a team just through free agency. It has to come from within our own organization. We mentioned too before we were no matter what we pick one through four, we're going to get a young, good young player in that regards. So, you know that's where over the next couple of weeks here, sitting down with our coaching staff, and then next month sitting down with our pro scouts and our amateur scouts, um, we'll devise a plan on seeing how much we have to do change what makes our team a better opportunity to have success next year.